Continuing on with my top 30 favorite movies, we're now at number 6 on my list, and let's talk about, quite frankly, the best Batman movie ever made, and that is, of course, The Dark Knight. You know, taking one of the most well-known superheroes and putting him in a realistic environment is a hard thing to do, but God bless the power of Christopher Nolan and David S. Goyer for creating such a universe where Batman could exist in the real world, so why couldn't they do that with Superman? I mean, I know technically Christopher Nolan was just a producer on Man of Steel, but... Did you see what Zack Snyder did with Superman? But uh, I digress. Well, that's a whole other thing altogether. But let's talk about the plot of this movie for the, what, uh, minus one of you that haven't seen this movie already. But um, in this movie, Batman raises the stakes in his war on crime. Batman, of course, being once again played by Christian Bale. With the help of Lieutenant Jim Gordon, played by Gary Oldman, and District Attorney Harvey Dent, played by Aaron Eckhart, Batman sets out to dismantle the remaining criminal organizations that plague the city streets. The partnership proves to be effective, but then soon find themselves prey to a reign of chaos unleashed by a rising criminal mastermind known to the terrified citizens of Gotham as the Joker, played by the late Heath Ledger. And honestly, really, I don't have much more I can say about The Dark Knight that hasn't already been said already. It's not just a perfect action movie, but it's also a perfect crime thriller as well. The characters in this movie are all memorable, the story is very solid, the interpretations of these characters are so well thought out, and there's just so many memorable things about this movie. I mean, Christian Bale once again shines as Batman. Uh, Bruce Wayne, I should say. While his Batman is not quite as memorable. I'm not going to say it's bad like most people sometimes say it is. But, um, I mean, you go listen to Kevin Conroy when he does the voices of both Bruce Wayne and Batman. You can tell that it's him doing both voices at the same time. But at the same time, he can also split his performance up at one point. Playing Bruce Wayne with a regular voice when he's Batman makes him very, sound very more distinct and different from Bruce's voice. I mean, even Michael Keegan does it, did, when he, did it when he played Batman, but when Bale plays Batman, it really does feel like he smoked a pack of Marlboros. I mean, that's a joke that's been made millions of times beforehand, but it's hard not to think that, man. It is really hard not to think that, but um, but he's really good in the movie, Christian Bale is. Uh, the rest of the cast is also great, too. You got Michael Caine, Morgan Freeman, Gary Ullman, Aaron Eckhart, and Maggie Gyllenhaal, all doing a good job of making these characters their own. But, of course, the highlight of the movie is Heath Ledger as the Joker. And, I mean, my God. This guy creates a whole new image of the Joker that's so terrifying and so interesting to watch. It's just... A lot of people have their different points to where they found the Joker being menacing. Some thought it was when he slammed the pencil into the gangster's eye. Some thought it was when he told the stories about his father. But, to me, it's just one line. One line that he says before killing somebody. And it's not what you think. It's the line before he says... I'm a man of my word. It's when he's looking at the camera, he's looking at the guy that he's about to kill. He's just like, look at me. And he's, and he's just all of a sudden, he goes, look at me. Like, screams it at the top of his lungs. And I remember my first time hearing that. I was just like, oh, shit. <laughs> like that. Three simple words. Three simple words is all it takes because that's all it did for me to realize that this guy was just like serious business. I remember whispering to myself. Like I said, I remember whispering to myself, oh, shit. Like... At that point, you're terrified of this guy, and you also understand what he does when he does, because uh, one of my favorite scenes in the movie is where he burns a huge pile of money that's like a pyramid, which is insane, but he does it because, as he puts it, it's not about the money, it's about sending a message. But of course, the Joker is not the only main threat in the movie. Aaron Heckart's two faces, nowhere near as insane as or as menacing as the Joker, but He's still a force not to be messed with. The effects on Dan after he becomes Two-Face are pretty well done. I can't believe how eerily close they came from capturing the actual look of Two-Face. I mean, Eckhart's really given it his all and incredibly totally fits what you would expect to see from a character like Two-Face in that situation. The script really does a good job of putting both of these villains in the movie and making one continuously enjoyable story that doesn't feel forced or thrown in just for the hell of it. It runs at a, move in a smooth enough pace where there is so much to admire about the movie in general. I mean, I consider Christopher Nolan's Batman trilogy on the same level as something like the original Star Wars trilogy. I mean, both Batman Begins and Star Wars gave us a great introduction to these two worlds, creating memorable characters and action sequences. The Dark Knight and The Empire Strikes Back are easily the best films in those series, both capturing the memorable characters and the action sequences, as well as turning in some great twists and turns in every corner. And The Dark Knight Rises and Return of the Jedi are still good movies, but they have a lot of flaws and scenes that make them both the least enjoyable of the series. Not to say that they're horrible movies, just nowhere near as good as what they had done before, which 
to do three films is really, really hard to do, and um, it definitely felt like that when you watch both The Dark Knight Rises and Return of the Jedi, and it was well, well, other, other trilogies as well, especially one that we'll get to as we get higher up on the list here, but um, whatever you may think of it, The Dark Knight is one of the most perfectly put together movies in recent years, creating new interpretations of memorable characters to come to know and love, making a great story, throwing in a ton of great action sequences, making it all seem very realistic, it's easily the best Batman movie ever made, and trying to top that would be impossible to do just because of how perfect it is. I mean, it's not only the movie that Batman needed, but it's the movie that Batman deserves. Because he's not our hero, he's a silent guardian, a watchful protector, a dark knight. My number six favorite film of all time. So that's going to wrap it up as we head into the top five next week. Uh, if you want to see what I said about the Back to the Future trilogy last week, uh, check out the video below. Check out some of the other videos I've done, and I will see you guys next week.